I'm very happy to see so many ordinary people, mums and dads, you know, children um, of all ethnic backgrounds coming out today to show their opposition loud and clear that they do not want the Linus Rare Earth um, project in, Quan in Malaysia.
Tun Town came to life on the, the 26th of February, 2012. The approximated crowd was close to 18,000 strong could not be wrong to support him pun nan he jaw 2.0. They want Linus to pack up Gabang and leave Malaysia from the Rare Earth Project. In retrospection over Bukit Mehra radioactive incident, it looks like history is going to repeat itself, and this time in Gabang Kuantan. Peeking into what had happened in Bukit Mehra 30 years ago, Malaysia videos began its journey to rekindle over the devastating effects that had scared the lives of the unfortunate. Thirty years ago, the Asia Rare Earth plant in Bukit Mehra saw for the first time in Malaysia legal history where an entire community acted over the environmental issue to protect their health and environment from radioactive pollution. The villagers experienced stinging smoke and choking foul smell. Subsequently, their health began failing constantly with acute bouts of coughs and colds. Then, the inevitable happened when a sharp rise of leukemia, infant deaths, congenital disease, and lead poisoning setting the alarm bell ringing too late. 10,000 other residents of Bukid Mayra wanted the rare earth plant shut down because the radioactive waste was endangering their lives. Today, 30 years later, the Malaysian government is allowing a new rare earth plant to be set up by Linus and Gabang, Kuantan. The New York Times reported that as many as 2,500 workers are rushing to complete a 30 million plant in Gabang, near Kuantan, that will be refining radioactive ore from Australia. Kuantan's population is approximately 607,778 and it is the ninth largest city in Malaysia, which has an area of about 324 square kilometers. Jebang is a small town in main industrial area in Kuantan, Pahang, Malaysia. The town is located near Kuantan Port. The concerned residents have applied for leave to quash the temporary operating license TOL, awarded to the facility but to no avail. Left with no choice, him Punan Hijau 2.0, the residents' initiative will gather at the municipal field on the 26th February to make their stand that Linus has to go. By 8 a.m. the congregating venue was filled with a modest crowd, waiting for the Him Punan Hijau supporters to stream in. The sporadic crowds in the nearby vicinity were all geared up waiting for more to come before walking to join those who were already on the way. For the first time in Kuantan history, this gathering expected to be mammoth made up from the people coming from far and near would be unprecedented. And they all came for a good cause demanding Linus to get out from Gay Bank. Malaysia Videos had the opportunity to talk with Jade Lee, an environment consultant, a local, who is residing in Australia. Her presence in Him Poonun Hijau 2.0 showed her concern not only for Kuantan or Malaysia as a whole, but also globally. Some do. I think, um, as you know, Australia is a big continent. It is very difficult sometimes to reach out to all the Malaysians because we are not um, that closely connected or linked. Um, there is no, for example, uh, a general Malaysian uh, association or whatever. Um, and most of the groups and societies are geared towards um, more social kind of uh, events. So increasingly, yes, we're getting support from people in Sydney, from people in Perth, for example. And as we speak right now, the people in Perth are gathering in a local pub, in a true blue Aussie way, to show their solidarity for Himbudan Nijau. Yes, of course, um, we were very concerned that we could not reach 10,000. But, you know, judging from the crowd, it's probably twice as many who turn up. Uh, I am very sure Nick Curtis, the chairman, director chairman for Linus, would be very worried if he, had, he, if he was there. My concern is that I know, for very, uh, I know very well, and looking through many of the documents put out by Linus, um, that this project in Australia would not have been allowed to build in a pit swamp area so close to so many people and so close to fishing village which fish out from the water nearby where Linus will be dumping their waste um, uh, into, I mean their, their contaminated water into. 
Um, and also the way it is uh, constructed, the process in which Linus has been following in Australia um, has been very short and rather um, shonky in that there was no public consultation, um, there was no knowledge of this plan by the general public before construction approval was given. And looking also at some of the impact assessment um, done by Linus, I do not think that many of the factors have been included. Um, I am also aware that this project has had a conditional approval uh, previously by the Western Australian Government. But in that approval, um, there are 20, uh, 41 conditions. Some of the conditions are, for example, liners having to carry out social impact assessment before they commence any construction. And that liners will have to um, provide very clear, very careful, um, detailed plan as to how they will manage their waste. Uh, the waste from Malwell um, and from the refinery will have to return to the Malwell mine in Australia um, and no water will be allowed to be discharged into the natural environment uh, and that air pollution is tightly controlled and that there would not be any uh, sulfur dioxide discharge in the air and also no oxides of nitrate uh, going into our atmosphere but in the case of Malaysia none of that was properly addressed. I would want that plant to pack up and go home. Um, even though I live in Australia and this is my hometown, I have my mum living here, brothers and sisters. Um, I do not think that this plant will benefit Malaysia at all because of the 12 years tax break. Um, not only it will not benefit Malaysia, I fear that this plant will create, will be the beginning of a big disaster for a pretty peaceful and tranquil uh, and a lush um, town like Kuantan. Because I think the Linus issue has been around for a long time. Um, many came from in the States. Um, I mean, they would not just come out here for a day of fun. I mean, if they want to come here, they'll come for a day of holiday. They wouldn't be coming here for a rally, which risks, you know, turning ugly, judging from what happened at Bursay 2. Um, and looking at the number of banners and the you know shouting of the slogans, I think the crowd, to some extent, know that this project is not good for Malaysia. That would be the very least. They may not have the full detail, but I believe and I trust from speaking with them that they do know a fair bit about it. They. This is not new, I mean, rare earth is not new in Malaysia. This is a second rare earth project. The last one ended in disaster with Mitsubishi um, being forced by having a very bad international reputation to close down the plant. And we have seen people suffering as a result of the waste that was very poorly managed. And we about to you know, see in this Linus project Something even worse in that sense that this project um, will be producing many, many times more waste than the Mitsubishi project. In fact, this project is 10 times bigger in terms of its capacity and throughput. And that is very worrying. And it is located in a flood prone, um, low peatland mangrove swamp. That's the danger of this project. I do not think that it is such a simple thing in that Linus Corporation has invested a huge amount of money in the plant. I think, uh, yes, whilst we all would like to see the back of Linus our, and um, that the plant be closed, but I think it will take a lot more than just having a rally. That is important, um, no doubt, and politically to show to the government that they actually do not have the mandate or the consensus from the people to allow this plan from happening. Um, but to try and close it will take a lot more than that.
it will require legal action, it will require a lot more concerted effort by concerned citizens and uh, Malaysians particularly to strongly uh, and continuously object to this hazardous project. I think given the location of this plant, it would be almost impossible. And given that Malaysia is such a small country for such a huge plant, we're talking about the world's biggest rare earth plant. Which country and which, which rare earth projects have we seen that are sustainably done, uh, that, are, uh, that has got adequate waste management um, plan? We haven't. Even the most so-called advanced rare earth project in the US has had a lot of problems and, and hiccups. And I, until the technology is, um, until these companies are prepared to put in a lot of money to make their waste managed in a safe way, we should not have this kind of project in a country like Malaysia, where the capacity to monitor, to assess, and uh, to enforce law is not really there. Um, I guess, you know, from my point of view, we still want to get rid of liners and we must. It's a matter of how to do it in a way that we can. Um, one of the additional problems with this project has been um, the construction of the plant itself from inside information and we do have many local engineers, even foreign engineers, who could not believe what they saw in the plant and who had came out to whistleblow um, on the shonky construction and the poor design of the plant. Um, so these are some of the issues that we can pressure our local government, our state government, and also our federal authorities to pay more attention to. I mean, surely if they, I mean, all of these government departments and authorities have a duty of care for its citizens. After all, they're all funded by taxpayers. Um, and they need to heed some of these construction defects and um, design problems. So that you know, one day they are not liable. They will not be liable for the consequences that will befall our people and our environment. Yeah. Well, it is hard for me to say because there are many levels of activism. I'm more a an, well, I am an environmental campaigner, um, a lobbyist, and also a policy um, uh, kind of development person. I, I see the role of um, activism and I see a very important role in this case played by grassroots activists. For grassroots activists, they have to continue to network with other people and they need to continue to learn more about this project so that they can um, campaign and advocate accurately the, the truth about this plant. And for the policy maker, they really seriously, I mean, I'm talking about the opposition, uh, Arduns and MPs, they also have to learn more about this project to look at area of weaknesses in Malaysian's policy and law that has resulted in this plan being constructed and, uh, you know, not with any public consultation until such a late state and also for lawmakers to make sure that our laws are being adhered to by this project. At this stage, um, I believe from speaking with local lawyers that not all the laws have been followed and that's why they will be um, potential for legal action and in fact there was already a uh, case being lodged in Kuala Lumpur. I think it is a, this is a beginning of people finding out more about big projects from overseas. And, you know, it is heartened for me, somebody who has uh, always wanted to live sustainably, who wanted to see sustainable development for any country, including Malaysia and especially Malaysia, um, that so many people has actually taken to the street on an environmental issue. I mean, that's unprecedented in Malaysian history, I would say. I mean, to that large scale. 
Um, so that's a good start. Um, I think we need to examine our own lifestyle. Everything we use, I'm not saying that we, we should not go for high-tech gadget or digital gadget or low-carbon technology. We must and we have to because that's the only way we can sustain planet Earth. But in so doing, we must not let corporations and companies cut corners. In this case, Linus could have built the plant in Australia and fulfilling the 41 conditions that the, the Australian government set for it. Why is Linus coming to Malaysia to risk so many you know, issues uh, to have this plant? Because they want it cheap, they want it quick. That's the problem. And unfortunately, our government hasn't you know, carry out um, strong tests and uh, assessment. Perhaps our government too needs to understand the hazards from this kind of project. And I like to, to see the government take paying more attention after this particular rally to, to show them, which has shown how outraged the people are over this.
think uh, it's a wonderful uh, achievement and it's such a great achievement uh, and the weather has been very kind to us it means the cloud just came to protect us as if you know God in heaven also listened to what we are we are talking about and this is about the world that he created you know and we are here to protect it from greedy hands and uh, it was a beautiful it's a beautiful day and uh, it's a very successful uh, rally ever after the peaceful assembly act has been uh, gazetted on the 9th of february and uh, there's more than 15000 that my eye can see uh, and, and and estimate is about 15000 but it was so peaceful what what what's even more beautiful about it it, it, it is uh, a convergence of people from various groups we have the public, we have the, we have the uh, political parties from both sides actually, not only from Pakatan, there are some people from me and I also saw them wearing the, 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 their, their t-shirt. Uh, we also have from the civil societies, we have from the NGOs, we have families. This really represents the Rakyat Malaysia who wants uh, sustainable development, who doesn't want destructive uh, projects and uh, toxic projects because we want to pass down this earth and this, this uh, this world, yeah, this earth as well, to, to, to our younger generation, to the future generation. We don't want to make decisions today that will that will burden them in future. And it is very irresponsible to leave them with radioactive waste, which is not ours in the first place. Will the crowd good enough to make the government realize that we say nothing like that? I hope so. I hope so. Especially when the judicial hearing is a judicial review hearing is on Tuesday, and I hope that the government, especially the people making decisions, will see what the rakyat is asking for today. And then the, the rakyat is asking for it in a very peaceful manner, and uh, but saying out their voice. And, and I really hope they listen. My final question: If the government do not pay it, what then? The government do not pay heed. There's always avenues for uh, uh, appeal, you know, because uh, we're asking for a leave and stay of the decision. If if, uh, if the decision of the court is against us, we will go to appeal court. And if the appeal court fails, we will go to federal court. By that time, we'll take over the government. Thank you so much. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations to all. Is the crowd today good enough to tell the government that I think the crowd today is significant enough to give a clear message to the government to stop liners and uh, so the chairperson has given 24 hours to the Prime Minister. He says either liners goes or the government goes. So I think I think we hope Najib gives an answer tomorrow, right tomorrow. What is your estimation of the crowd? 15,000. 15. 1-5. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm extremely happy seeing that multiracial, you know, citizen coming out without fear, uh, treasuring their basic right of uh, peaceful assembly and also the basic right of defending their homeland uh, from uh, destructive, polluting uh, industry. I'm very happy and very touched with the response from the public. They have been very, very cooperative and very peaceful and uh, they have spoken loud and clear that they love this land and they do not want liners in this land. And the same with, you know, Bukit Koman and uh, the Rawang High Tension Wire, the Aura Asli, uh, all these issues. They have spoken loud. Yeah? Uh, how long does the government want us to, to, to bear this kind of agony? Yes, definitely. You know, with uh, Mr. Wong Tang, my wife here, and you know, many, many more. Many, I, I just could not name all of them. Unknown, uh, un yeah, I just cannot name all of them. So many of them. Thank you very much for them. Yeah. We know that the voice is so clear, uh, so loud. Uh, uh, we are very sure uh, the project should be cancelled. But we ask for a decision from the government within 24 hours. 24 hours. 24 right. hours. That's right. Decision on what? On cancer. Uh, not just the TOL, but cancel the whole plan within 24 hours. We want a decision. Don't pull any trick like observation team, uh, monitoring team. This is nonsense. Sending the, the waste back to, to, uh, to Australia. Those are nonsense. Those tricks we don't want to hear anymore. Uh, because we want an ounce of war.
raw material come into our shore, uh, reaching our shore, uh, we will not allow an inch of our land uh, to be occupied by this toxic industry. That is very clear. Uh, the process of this plan will not will not happen. What if the government do not pay for it? Uh, I, if they are, it's very clear, by looking at today, the power is in people's hands. Uh, the people power is strong, the voice is really strong. Uh, if the, the, the government uh, continue with this kind of behavior, uh, continue with this kind of attitude, not least push people aside and talk, they can uh, pull those things through, then they make a great mistake. I can, I can assure you that. Uh, I know election is coming near. We want this issue uh, to be settled. Uh, before election, but we request a, 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 a decision from the government if within 20, 24 hours, or else we will kick off our Himbunan Nijau Diga immediately. All the world, Malaysia, uh, every corner of Malaysia, probably not just Malaysia, I'm sure our movement will be expand across the shore uh, in the international community. That is for sure. Yeah, it's fantastic, not just about a lot of young people, I think also a lot of uh, different races. That's why I just said, you know, they play the, the, the part saying, that, uh, only uh, this is a Chinese issue. Only the Chinese uh, community is concerned, which is a false statement, which is a lie all along. And we know that. And do they prove? Uh, can they prove this is an issue of humanity? Uh, this is an issue that everyone are concerned. Uh, we all have children. We have family. Uh, we love this land. No way. We are, we are going to nowhere. Uh, we are going to nowhere. This is our country. This is our motherland. We are going to be set foot here, and we will not uh, let liners to say we will manage the waste for 300 years. We will manage the ways uh, for 500 years. We are not talking about 300 years. We are not talking about 500 years. We are talking about millions and millions of years. Uh, government uh, today in, in power today might promise you the world, uh, might promise you the sky, but they might not be in power in few months. Who is going to take care? Who is going to take care of this ways? Uh, our children will have to pay for it. Uh, with help, with life, can we can we withstand that? Can we be a bystander? Nowhere, nowhere. People already know this message already very clear. They cannot continue to lie to the people. They cannot continue to lie to the people. Dia dapat membantu menjanakan ekonomi untuk negeri ini. Boleh, boleh. Tapi berapa? Berapa, tuan? <laughs> Jual berapa? Jual berapa? 70 juta dolar! <laughs> Okey. Duit, duit, duit. <laughs> ini dia habuannya, Datuk Menteri Besar. Wow! Wow, 70 juta dolar! Boleh, kita boleh buka kilang lain aja gebeng. Dapat duit itu nanti, you mau pergi ke mana? Oh, sudah ada 70 juta sebagai menteri basah, mau pergi ganteng! Mau pergi London! You mau buat apa di sana? Saya mau pergi enjoy! Sebagai menteri besar, Tuan jangan risau. Saya akan mengarahkan penduduk kampung di GB menjual tanah untuk Tuan membuka kilang. Lain lah. Saya itu secepat mungkin. Boleh Tuan, no problem. Dalam poket saja Tuan, jangan risau. Hai rakyat-rakyat ke kampung semua. Hai rakyat-rakyat kampung di GB semua. Teman sebagai menteri besar, Pak. Nak mengalahkan awak-awak, jualah tanah di gebeng itu. Tanah! Nak buat apa? Nak buat apa? Kita nak buka kilang lina. Kilang menatang apa tu? Kilang ni untuk majukan negeri Pahang juga. Ya, kedok menipu je kaya. Nama macam pumpu eh, lina. Rakyat Pahang ni, ini untuk semua rakyat Pahang. Awak jangan, awak jangan menyesal. Kita buka kilang ni untuk kemajuan kita juga. Ah, anak kawan tengok YouTube ni pun je bahaya. Orang putih tu cakap bahaya. Jangan. Awak bincang dulu dengan kampung. Oh, orang kampung. Bincang. Oh, bincang. Oh, bincang. Ni 
tipu tanda. Ah, awak jangan menyesal awak tak jual tanah sana tu ya. Nanti kalau suruh polis tu tangkap buka awak. Ha? Awak jangan menyesal eh. Jangan jangan menyesal. Tak apa. Ha. Polis. Tangkap, tangkap. Oh.